It's the nation's favourite antiques experts. Let the road trip begin. Behind the wheel of a classic car. Woo! Hit the roof, then. And a goal to scar Britain for antiques. Pump yourself up with antiques. The aim, to make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. That's a top job, isn't it? There'll be worthy winners. £400. Fantastic. And valiant losers. I'm screaming on the inside. Will it be the high road to glory? The gloves are off. Or the slow road to disaster? The gearbox is gone. This is the Antiques Road Trip. <laughs> Groovy, baby. Way a man. We're in the northeast of England, and it's the start of another Antiques misadventure. Good morning. Good morning, young man. How are we? Keep it coming. Keep the batteries <laughs> coming. We're starting off on the right foot, aren't we? <laughs> exactly. Oh, you charmer. Buttering him up already. On this trip, the stately Stephen Moore is joined by the glamorous Rue Irvin. <laughs> a dealer from Argyle and Butte, Rue's a bit of a magpie. She can't resist shiny objects. Oh, my goodness. And appreciates the finer things in life. It's got to have age and it's got to have class. Speaking of which, Northumberland lad Stephen is a dealer who leaves no stone unturned. I've antiques everywhere. These could be exciting. Welcome to Northumberland. Oh, well, thank you. This is my first time, really. So are you a Geordie boy? Born and bred. Tell Can't you tell by my accent? Very soft. You are each hinny. <laughs> That's all right, honey, to you and me. <laughs> OK. <laughs> They're behind the wheel of a luxurious 1968 Rolls-Royce Corniche. And how is it to drive? It drives very nice. It's as smooth as silk, I must say. Yeah. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 <laughs> very nice. Now, I did notice as you honked the horn, you veered towards that fence. Till you drive this car, dear. Well, I know, I know. Oh. Hold tight, Rue. Now then, they each have £200 to spend on this leg and a lot of shopping to do. Are you quite competitive, Mr Moore? Well, put it this way, how many have you won? <clears throat> how many have you? One. Right, OK. One, one, one. Well, let's one. move on from that question. Yes. Never quite taken the top spot, our room, but that could all change this time out as the Rolls takes them on a whistle-stop tour hither and thither across Northumberland before a final showdown in Leicestershire. We should practice our royal wave. Hi, hi, How do you do? How nice to see you. Oh, it's a very lazy wave, isn't it? No, it's not lazy, it's regal. <laughs> to the tower with you, you Rue Oh, Raven. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mm. It's all in the wrist, chaps. On this leg, their Royal Highness's purchases will go under the hammer in Market Harborough. But let the shopping extravaganza begin in the hamlet of Coopland. Where Stephen has dropped Rue off at her first shop, Borders Architectural Antiques. They sell exactly what they say on the tin in here. Architectural salvage and antiques. Gordon's been running the place for over 30 years and has packed it out with all sorts of goodies. I wonder what treasures Rue will unearth in here. This has caught my eye. First thing I do, I'm so greedy. I look at the bottom to look for marks, and this is Birmingham silver, hallmarked. And this seems to be a pillbox and it has this beautiful, almost enamel type material. It's got the Masonic symbols, the set square and the compass. So it, it screams Freemasonry. There is a price on it and it's 95 pounds. So I love it. I think it'd be a great first buy because it's, it's kind of captured my heart a little bit. I'll keep looking, but that's a definite possibility. Uh -huh. Indeed, it's early doors and there's plenty more shop to explore. In the meantime, Stephen's driven on to Ford, Berwick upon Tweed, and his first appointment, Old Forge Antiques. Oh. Find the paintwork, old boy. There's an eclectic range of antiques and collectibles inside this former working forge. Oh, that's better. Oh, looks cosy. That's how you do it, isn't it? I made a dent in it. Come on, Stephen, chop, chop. It's 
too much choice. Decisions, decisions. This is a Chinese vase. But is it Ming? Or is it Minging? It's only 20 pound. It's quite decorative. Um, but it's a good, you know, scene of warriors, very colourful. Uh, but you know, 20 pound. It's not expensive. I'll put it there. Don't want anybody driving past seeing it, but it's interesting. What's great about being in an antique shop is you can compare and contrast. Compare that one to that one, and what do you tell straight away? Well, I can tell straight away, this one isn't very old at all. This is maybe 10 years old, 20 years old at the moment. And when you look at the figures, this has been transfer printed and hand painted in, whereas this one, the one I like better, this has all been freehand painted, so this is a much better one. It's older, it's 100 years difference between this. And this one, this one's 45 pounds. The, the antique one is cheaper than the... I'm gonna browse and think, but it's definitely on the list. One for Stephen. Let's hop back to Rue. She's already spotted that Masonic pillbox. Anything else caught her magpie eye? I like silver spoons. So the first thing I want to see is whether they're silver or silver plate. Here we have a little leopard's head, which means it's London made. So it's slightly more rarer. Quite a nice, simple design. It almost looks mid to late Victorian. So it's got some good age on it. Original box, but there's no price on it. But that's another possibility, and I think I need to speak to the lovely dealer to find out just how much they are. That's two items so far. Anything else tickle your fancy? In amongst all these dressing table items are two lovely sugar sifters. We know them as sugar sifters or flower shakers. But do you know what the real name for these is? Muffin ears. That's a great name, isn't it? Because it was actually used for sprinkling cinnamon on muffins. And what's lovely is they've got this beautiful cut glass. Nowadays, would we use anything so beautiful to sprinkle sugar onto our muffins? Yes, I use mine every day. Back to business, please. But they are quite collectible. And the fact that they are uh, Hallmark Silver, Birmingham, means they have a minimum value because of the silver. So uh, I might actually find out what the price is on these. I'll take them to the till. Can Rue do a deal with Gordon for the muffineers, teaspoons and pillbox? Now, these don't have a price on them, neither do the spoons. So the Masonic pillbox is 95. What tasty number could you do? 55. 55, okay. And um, what about the London spoons there? The uh, 40. The 40. And how much could you do on them? 35. 35. And how much for these? 35. Not 30? Afraid not. <laughs> I like a man that stands his ground. <laughs> that's good. You're saying 55 for the pillbox, 35 for the spoons, that's 90, plus 35 for these, that's 125. If I took all three... <laughs> Brace yourself, Gordon. Would you be able to take a wee bit more off? 120. 120? That is very fair. I will gladly take them off you. Thank you so much. After that little shopping spree, Rue is left with £80 to go on with. Thank you very much. I will actually leave it in this lovely water fountain for Perfect. you. Perfect. Now, how are things going with Stephen back in Coopland? He's already spotted the Chinese vase, remember? Now, this looks like 17th century cache, which is kind of a Scottish drinking vessel, so you would have a, some wine or some whiskey, maybe, and you would have a good drink from that. Yes, I think I could... Hmm. £48, it's a little bit rich. But, you know, it's quite a nice thing. It looks like it's been gilded as well. Who wouldn't like a little tip of like a little whiskey at night from that? This is what you need, a nice glass of whiskey by the fire. Oh, actually, it's so much better. It's so cold in here. That's two irons in the fire for you so far, Stephen. Any more for any more? I'm old enough to remember when badgers were fashionable the first around the 70s. Oh, look, 
I want to be macho. You see, I could be macho if I tried. All I need is a little badge. Maybe not. Actually, what is this? Is this is an early photographic print on metal. Now you can kind of see how it's glistening. They actually de they decay over the years because there's a solution of silver on the metal which is exposed. But it's in this original frame. It is £25. And I think that's got a certain charm. It's going on the pile. It's going to be decision time. The clock is ticking. Time to summon shopkeeper John. Shop. Oh, you're behind me. <laughs> John. Um, Hello. John, I've narrowed it down to three things. Right. Ours is 20. I don't think that's, that's fine. The mm -hmm. photograph is 25. Cache is 48. Could you tease me a little bit? Right, so uh, the cache will be is 48, so we say 40. OK. The photograph is priced at 25, yes. so 20. And the vase, I think, is OK at 20. So 80 for the three. Yes. Is there any chance we could shave a little, tiny little? Oh, um... Look, you come and stand by the fire. Warm well, yourself, I, sir. Thank you. Thank and see how you feel. Well, I'm warming to you, certainly. You see, my plan's working so far. <laughs> <laughs> Toasty. Uh, so wh why don't we say 70 for the three? I think that says you have yourself a deal. I shall pay before you change your mind. £70 for all three items leaves Stephen with £130 for later. Thank you. Time to get back in the roller and mosey on. 36 miles south, Rue has arrived in Amble on the Northumberland coastline. A traditional coastal town, it's known as the friendliest port in England. Rue's here to meet local historian Bart Rippon to learn about its fishing past. Hi, Bart. Hello. Permission to come aboard? Certainly, my dear. Rue is meeting Bart aboard a Cobal, a traditional small vessel which once dominated the northeast fishing industry but is now sadly disappearing. Bart, this is a lovely wee boat. A lovely boat, yes. The Cobles built, and this one in particular was built here in Amble at Harrison's Boatyard. Right. But sadly, they don't make them anymore. Were fishing boats like this common in Northumberland? They were um, for a good number of years. What was it that led to their decline? Changing fishing patterns, where we would have had nets going off and fishing lines all baited up and they would put the, the, the lines out for catching your cord and your haddock and things like that. All that's, all that's gone from a, from a boat like this now. Since the arrival of trawlers, fishing has increased on an industrial scale, decimating more traditional and sustainable fishing methods. To make matters worse, the British only have a taste for certain species, mostly cod, tuna and salmon, meaning those stocks are overfished and 80% of the daily catch ends up exported. One man trying to change this is Andrew Gooding, who Rue has come to meet. Hi, Andrew. Hello, Rue. Wow, this is quite a display of fish you've got here. Yeah, there's a fair few different fish there to choose from. But uh, what part does your shop play in sustainable fish? The community of Amble is very much rooted around it being a, a working harbour. We have a, our own lobster hatchery so that we are augmenting some of the local lobster stocks so that there's something there to catch in the future. Mm -hmm. And also try and encourage people to eat the fish that are caught rather than what they particularly fancy on that day. Why do you think people are quite safe with their choice of fish? Years and years ago, people must have just eaten what they caught. And I think we've just become really kind of safe. You know, just having fish from the fish and chip shop, um, which is great, and I'm not knocking that, but, you know, we can use fish in lots of different ways as well. I have to say, I'm feeling brave today. Good. Um, <laughs> I've never, ever filleted a fish. Will you show me how to fill it? Shall we have a go at filleting a gurnard? Go on, then. My life will be all the richer for having done something new. Gurnard, traditionally used as bait, 
are a sustainable alternative to cod. Andrew, can I say I'm actually shaking a little bit. I've never even handled a whole fish. This should be interesting. It's not going to do anything to you now, so don't worry <laughs> about it. Recently, Gurnard have enjoyed a restaurant renaissance with people realising that they make great eating. Oh, dear. And their popularity is on the rise. Set the side off. I think, I, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. I'm, I'm brave. I'm a grown girl. That's a spirit, Rue. Tip the, the fish on its side, put the knife in where that hole is, and then just run it up to the head. Keep going. It's a slippery thing, isn't slippery it? Slippery fish. Oh, come back, my friend, come back. Got it. I must apologise because I tell you what, nobody would be buying this fillet of fish. That's pie mix. Nice. <laughs> pie mix. I haven't done the best job. You've skinned it really well. Hawk. Oh, Andrew, I'm so sorry. It's quite alright. Oh dear. Um, not quite looking like your fillet. <laughs> Don't worry, Rue. It will still taste delicious once Andrew's done with it. Back in land, Stephen's putting the rolls through its paces. And what could be better than being out in an open top Rolls Royce? But I mean, look at it gorgeous Northumberland, gorgeous car, all to myself, three antiques in the bag. There he goes, tooting his own horn again. Stephen's making his way to the market town of Annick, home to the eponymous castle of Harry Potter fame, and the beehive, his next shop. Will Stephen score 10 points for Gryffindor in here? That's the shop owner, Mark, by the way. Watch out, Sherlock's about. This is my sort of area. Lovely little creamware dessert plate. Herculaneum, good Liverpool pottery. Nice little tea bowls. Lovely 18th century plate. But I've got to keep away from the china. You'll have to get your wallet out soon. Oh, he likes a good look around, does our Stephen. You have to keep your eyes open because, look, there's this lovely box of tiles. Or you could call it a jigsaw because I've no idea how they go together. Now, none of these are for sale because I think these are quite nice. Oh, God, I have to pick something heavy. Are these tiles for sale? Yeah, yeah, of course. Can I lay them out? Yeah. Oh. That one. Oh, there's something in the thing. Oh, here we are. Look, 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 look. We are cooking with gas. These are probably French. Uh, France made a lot of tiles. Britain made a lot of tiles. Tiles are actually quite hard to make. These are pressed clay. So the clay has been powdered clay, which has been pressed under high pressure. Mark looks impressed with Stephen's tile knowledge. <laughs> so this could have been in a hallway either side of the front porch, it could have been in a conservatory, could have been in a bathroom. I think it's not really very kitcheny. I'm right chuffed with myself. How much are they? You can have them for 20 quid, Stephen. 20 quid? You sure you know more lying around? There are only one, so. two, I three, mean, four, sadly not. five, six. We're only six short. The wallet is coming out. Thanks, Mark. That leaves £110 in Stephen's kitty. Time to find Rue back in Amble. Arriving in style. Well, you know me. Oh. Are you eating? I've been uh, filleting and cooking, my lovely. <laughs> Did you cook it? Mmm. I filleted the gurners. OK. Make it. This looks, this looks fabulous. It is beautiful. I think it's what you deserve after a long day of A shopping. hard day on the antiques. But bon appetit. Mmm. It's lovely, isn't it? Mmm, it's delicious. I think this is a perfect way to end a good mm. day. The sun's going down. The River Allen, Walkworth Castle. And where's, where's the champagne? Oh, well, I can do everything. <laughs> well, <laughs> disappointing, that's all I can say. <laughs> bon appetit. Et bonsoir, mes amis. Wakey, wakey! Another day of antiquing awaits. Rue's driving the roller today with Geordie boy Stephen in the passenger seat. So this really is your backyard? Well, this is Gateshead. Gateshead? This is south of the time. Eight, eight. Gazan tight. Do you like my Geordie accent? Well, was that come again? Eight, eight. 
what, what, what were you saying, dear? 88. 88? 88. 88. All right, pet. Let's get back to business. Yesterday, Rue bought a Masonic pillbox, a set of silver teaspoons, two Art Deco muffin ears, which leaves her with 80 pounds to spend on today's shopping. <laughs> Stephen bagged a 19th century Chinese vase, a silver plated quake, a tin type photograph, and a box of 19th century tiles. I'm right chuffed with myself. And still has £110 in his wallet. Are you excited for day two? Are you ready for oh, it? Yeah. Take me to the antiques. You know me. Mm. Sniff them out. <laughs> you can't hold these antique hounds back. After dropping Stephen off, Rue has driven on to Newcastle, the historic county seat of Northumberland. The mighty Tyne runs through the heart of the city, but on the outskirts is Graham Smith Antiques. Specialising in furniture, they also stock a comprehensive range of clocks, ceramics and glassware. There's Graham himself. Rue has £80 to spend and the clock's ticking. This looks to be a beautifully cased box of jam spoon and butter knife. Now we all know tea is a thoroughly British affair and back in the Victorian days it would be common to have beautifully ornate jam spoons and butter knives. But what I love most about this is the mother of pearl handle. It's just such a beautiful colour. It's iridescent, it's that lovely creamy white and it's quite unusual to see it on the handles. Now these are late Victorian 1880 and they're priced up at 45 but my worry is I've bought a few silvery items already. Should I be mixing it up a little bit? But that could be too good a price to refuse. So what I'm going to do is close the lid and carry on looking. But it's a maybe. One to come back for. What else can you rustle up? This does make me smile because in between the silver candelabras and the vases and the big globes, we have a wee boot. <laughs> it's very cute, it makes me smile. And that's why someone else will probably like it too. It's late Victorian, it's totally handcrafted out of wood, carved wood, and the style of it was called treen. It basically means of the tree. Simple as that. Just people who love to carve items out of wood. Thing is, there's a very big collector's market for it out there. It's priced up at £35, and what I love is the detail. So someone would have been toiling away for hours and days to get those shoelaces just right. Look at the little nail marks on the bottom of the sole. It's been made with love, care and attention. And sometimes I don't think you can put a price on that. But at £35, I'm going to have to put a price on it. So I'm going to ask Graham what he thinks about the spoon and butter knife set and my wee boot. Time to make a decision and cut a deal. Hi, Grail. Hi there. I spotted a couple of things. All right, very good. This boot is priced up at £35. Yes. And you have 45 on oh, the cutlery. Right. Yes, you could have that for £35. I have to admit, I do, I do love those. That's but my this favourite. Is different. I like that. OK. And the boot you could have for £28. I was thinking, I was hoping round about 2022. Right. Yeah, I can't do that. What I'll do is, to make a sale, you like it, £25, and that's the best £25? on the boot. £25? Yeah. I'll take your advice. Good. From, from dealer to dealer. <laughs> yeah, well done. I will buy this. Thank Excellent. you so much. £25? Very good. This boot was made for walking. Out of here for £25. Back to the roller and onwards. Meanwhile, Stephen has made his way to Sunderland, a city with a proud naval tradition. He's meeting local historian John Grundy. You must be John. That's me. And who's your mate? This is Jack. Jack. Jack Crawford. He's a celebrated local hero. Yes, Stephen has come to learn about a local man that would go down in history as one of Sunderland's most famous sons. Born somewhere around here. Uh, his dad was a keelman on the river. The keelmen were the 
sort of heroes of the Tyne and the Weir. So did he follow his father into being a keel man as well? Well, he joined his father when he was about seven, amazingly, in the boats, stayed there for a while, and then eventually, uh, ten years later, I think it was, he joined the Royal Navy. In 1797, Jack was serving aboard HMS Venerable. It was the height of the war of the First Coalition, with Britain and its allies in conflict with revolutionary France and its satellite states, including the newly created Dutch Republic. There's a flag and he's hammering something and it's a bit broken. What, what made him the hero he was? Well, at the Battle of Camperdown, that is where our Jack right. became the hero. Soon Jack found himself in the midst of a major naval battle. To counter the threat of invasion from the Dutch, the British attacked their fleet. The venerable, with Jack aboard, was at the vanguard of the assault. It was just chaos, and in the midst of it all, Admiral Duncan's main mast was blown down by a cannonball, and his colours, his flag, was destroyed. Soldiers, sailors have always hated losing their flag. There was pride involved, but there was more than that as well, because that was a sign of surrender. So the uh, colours coming down colors meant you gave down, up. Everybody else might have just given up, so it was, it was vital that the colours went back up again, and so they looked for a volunteer. And Jack did it. He, he climbed up, was injured quite badly, and uh, he nailed his colours to the mast, of course. Is that where the phrase comes from? It is. It's amazing, isn't it? So apart from uh, rescuing the battle and rescuing his, his admiral's flag, he gave the English language it's a Sunderland's phrase. It's Sunderland's gift to the world. It's one of them. One of <laughs> many, of course. I'm sure. Let's be fair. The Royal Navy went on to defeat the Dutch fleet, securing one of the most significant victories in British naval history, effectively ending the threat of invasion by France and its allies. Is this his medal? It is his medal. So this is from the people of Sunderland? This is from the people of Sunderland. That's fantastic. So, I mean, he came back as a hero. He was given an, uh, a, a pension by the king, 30 pounds a year. A king's ransom, it, practically, so yes. pretty well. And he became a, a keelman himself until 1831. And what happened then? Well, that's when the dreaded cholera hit Sunderland. The cholera pandemic swept Europe, killing hundreds of thousands. Jack was buried in an unmarked grave at the age of 56. And he was the second man known to have died in the whole of Britain. So from being a hero at the Battle of Camperdown, he became a statistic. He became a statistic. Only a few decades later. He did. It's very, very sad. It's tragic, really. But the people of Sunderland did not forget their hero. So this is the main man. This is the man doing the deed, eh? with his pistol. <laughs> in a tremendous situation, high up here above the town in Mowbray Park. A commanding spot. But interestingly, not a commanding person. And I think it's really amazing. I mean, if you look at the, the inscription, first of all, it was erected by public subscription. So it must have been quite unusual for working people to give money to commemorate another working man. To me, there's, there's just no surprise that a a place like Sunderland should have chosen a hero like this, a hero like itself, working class, brave, liked to drink, and they've put him here in this fantastic place. You can see all of Sunderland below him. Absolutely fantastic. What a man. I what know. a story. I wonder if it's time for Rue to nail her colours to the mast as she chases her first road trip victory. Rue and the Roller are en route to their next destination, Stanley, just over the border in County Durham. She has £55 to spend at Rain and James, specialists in antiques, vintage and the very quirky, all curated by Dila Philip. So this looks to be a model of a Yeti in a metal suitcase. And it's got a very Victorian feel to it. What's making me think that is that the Yeti is in this frame and it's reminding me of the old travelling circuses. So back in the Victorian times in the 1800s. But this probably was an advertising piece for the travelling circus. I have never in all my years of buying antiques come across a Yeti 
in a trunk, but I will remember this chap. But I'll find out the price is no harm in asking. Maybe he's been sitting around for years, no one wants him. Maybe he's waiting for me. At £350, it's abominably expensive. Speaking of which, our other wild man of the north has arrived. Stephen's shopping here too. He has £110, burning a hole in his pocket. Now, <laughs> happy memories of the gym class at school. I hated gym. But the school gym was full of these. Called jumping horses, I don't know, they probably have a proper name, with these suede tops. They're 50, 60, 70 year old, some of them are a little bit older. So, no prices. If I can afford one of them, great if I can afford all three, I doubt it, with £110. Philip! Hello there. You were loitering with intent, How weren't was you? you? Lots of intent. Um, what about the gym equipment? I would like 350 for the entirety. The stools could go separately. What, what, what would these stools Well, I would be? like uh, 130 would be lovely to me. I've got 110 pound left. Okay, okay. Would you, and I mean, don't, you know, I don't want to be a bully, but would you consider 110? Well, in all fairness, you've traveled this far and you're in the Northeast. I would shake your hand on that. Well, I'm going to seal the deal, get the money out. Thank you very much. 20, 40. That's £110 for the pair of stools. Stephen's vaulting ahead. <laughs> How's Rue getting on? Now, that's a very cool thing. I know people love their trunks and their storage, but this has really caught my eye. This is through and through quintessentially English. It's got that lovely racing green that you get on the British sports cars. This is really vintage, 1920s, 1930s. But what I want to do is look under the bonnet. No, that is very authentic. Those browns and beiges, they're very vintage. Now, there's no price on it, and I've only got £55 left. If I could speak to Phil, and get this for £55, this is definitely my last purchase. Hopefully, Rue can bag a bargain here. Phil, something I've seen that I've fallen in love with. Always on hand, that man. This trunk is very me. Well, there's no price on it, so I have £55 left. I was looking for £80. And if I had it, then I would absolutely give it to you. OK. OK, I'll do that for you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Phil. No I appreciate problem. that. No, my pleasure. Let me give you £55. For sure. A generous discount indeed, and that's Rue all shopped up. Time for our road trip weary companions to reunite. They'll have their purchases sent on to the sale room, as you do. Ladies first. <laughs> Age before beauty, my lovely. <laughs> but I should be going first. <laughs> Back in the roller, I wonder if the nerves are setting in down the auction now, though, isn't it? Yes, exactly. But it'll be good fun. A bit nail-biting auctions. It is. You can never guess it. You can never yes. predict it. It's down to the hammer now, chaps. Nighty night. Ahoy there! Auction day has arrived. Aloha! Hello, sailor. Come on aboard. Rue and Stephen are in Hartlepool at the National Museum of the Royal Navy. Their precious cargo has been sent south to Leicestershire and Market Harbour, home to family-run Gildings auctioneers. Brothers Mark and Will Gilding will both be wielding the gavel today. 80 pounds only at 80. Stephen spent every penny of his 200 pounds on five lots. Anything stand out for the older brother Mark? My favourite lot today is the uh, gymnasium horses. Lots of different uses for today's interior. You could use them as bar stools or you could use them in a home office. Rue also splashed out her whole £200 on five items. What does younger brother Will make of her lots? My favourite item uh, would be the Masonic uh, pillbox there. It's in really nice condition, so it should attract good interest in today's sale. The auction is open to online and commissioned bids from around the world. 
time to get underway. Is Hartlepool going to be lucky for us, Rue? I think it will. So, here goes. Right. Let's get ready to auction. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one, go. Stephen's 19th century Chinese vase will commence proceedings. £15, I bid 15 only. At 15 only at there 15. you go. £15 bid at 15, 15, 18, 20 pounds bid against. Nice. My absentee bidder at 20 pounds. Are there any further bids at 20? All done? Quite sure there. 20 pounds and selling. A modest profit. But a profit's a, a profit, a young man. A profit is a profit. Indeed. Good to get money in the pocket early on. Was it your favourite item? No. No? I, mean, I liked everything I bought, really. Can Rue's wee boot kick things off to a good start? I'm just hoping some treen collectors will mm -hmm. cast their eyes upon it. Or lovers of old boots. Who doesn't like an old boot? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go then, bid start with me. £12 bid, 12 15 £18 I bid. Needs to go up quite a bit more. 20, 18 you're all out online, 18 20 late bid coming in at 20 Come on. 20 20 pounds 22 22 It needs to creep up. Very close. Come on, one more. Get me into profit. Late absentee bid at £25. Oh. £25 and selling at £25. You always want someone to sneak in at the Money last second, Money back in your you? pocket, dear. Mm. Can't complain about that. All square on that one. So £25, I was hoping it would do a little bit more. Not much between them yet, as Stephen's tin-type photograph is next. I just thought it was kind of quite cute. I think he'll make, I think he'll make some profit. Start me, if you will, at £10. £10 to start the bidding, please. Oh, come on. It's a lovely piece of history. £10. £10 bid at 10. £12 bid. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> It'll creep up. Are you all done at £12? You're quite sure. £15. 15 oh. Pounds bid at 15. Ooh. Steadily climbing at £15. He's hovering. We'll sell then at £15. It's giving it good time. Yeah, but it's a £5 loss. <sighs> oh, well, you can't win them all. That was so cheap for £15. That was. It really was. What can Rue's Art Deco muffineers do next? Forty five, fifty pound, I'd be happy. Eighteen pounds, eighteen, eighteen, twenty. Twenty pounds now, twenty two. He's teasing it. At twenty two pounds, twenty five, twenty five, twenty eight. Well, oh, you're nearly there. It's a low start, but it's still. At twenty eight pounds, and we're creeping up. At twenty eight pounds, any further bids? Thirty. Thirty pounds bid. Thank you. At thirty. If I break even, I'll be happy with it. You're on the home run. £30 at the moment, and I will sell then at £30. Do you want to put the hammer down? Welcome to the Lost Club, darling. Sorry. Only a small setback. There's time to make it up. Somebody got a nice pair there. Stephen's 19 tiles are up now. Hours of fun on a wet day. Bid start hasn't returned the absentee bidders. They start the bidding at fifteen pounds. I bid fifteen. Really? Fifteen pounds here with me at fifteen. Fifteen pounds here with me at fifteen. Eighteen. Twenty pounds bid. Twenty. At twenty pounds bid. Both platforms are out. Selling to the absentee bidder at twenty. Well, it's not a loss. It's not a loss. Not much in it so far. All still to play for. I thought, you know what? That might just fly, and mm. it didn't. <laughs> Can Rue's Masonic pillbox be the first big profit of the day? Catching the eye of the absentee bidders and you online. You're waiting to come in, but I'm starting with my bids at 65, 70. I bid 70, 580. My bid 80, 590, 95, 100. Wow! No. Yes! Hooray! 10, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160. This is what I was dreaming for in my head. 160 pounds? At 160. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Well, congratulations, my dear. Well, thank you. And with that, Rue takes the lead. Well, may I say whoever bought that? Good choice, you have taste. <laughs> <laughs> Can Stephen mount a comeback with his silver-plated quake? A cup of love. A cup of love. But it's going to be loved by the auction. Start me, if you will, at £15 only at 15 At £15, thank you. £15 bid. £15 bid, 15 18 now 18 There's a long way to go. 18 pounds, 18, 20. 20 pounds bid at 20 at 20 pounds. You're all done at 20 pounds, quite sure. And sold then at 20. I'm quaking in my boots now. Not ideal, but he still has one more item to come. I tell you what, if that had been adorned with thistles, it would have done double that. Ah, can Rue's silver spoons serve up another profit? 
And there's something nice about using nice things, isn't it? There? It is. Years ago, people would only bring out the silver teaspoons at Christmas. Oh, when the vicar came round. £20 bid, 22 25 All quiet online. No! <gasps> Any further bids at 25 Please, one more. Fair warning. We'll sell. 25 28 Just in time, isn't it? Come on, go 30 £28, your bid. I've got 30 though, against you. Fair warning, then. Selling at 30 you and your last bidders. Well, yes, I know. That limped across the line, but it got there. Another lot that breaks even. It's definitely a silver streak for you. <laughs> Can Stephen vault ahead with his final item? Mark taking the hammer now. Bidding opens at £48 online. It's a good starting bid. And this is for two of them, remember. At £48 is the bid. He's certainly trying to sell them. 50 bid at 50. Five. 55. 60. I think it'll creep 60. up. 60. It's 60 pounds at 60 online. Well, they're not going to sell at 60, are they? Fair warning then, at 60 pounds. I'd really thought this would make a bit more, but there we go. 60 pounds is the bid. And we're selling the two away then at 60 pounds. Oh. 60 pounds? Ouch. Someone's got a real bargain there. Even the auctioneer thought I was robbed. I think you're robbed because they're a blank canvas. You can turn them into anything. Well, everything but a profit. Ending the auction, Rue's Vintage Harrods luggage. Hopefully this will revitalise the trunk market. Well, well I might need revitalising that makes a load of money. 50. 50 bit at 55, 65. You're in profit. Nice. 65, 75. 85. <laughs> 95. 100, 110. Oh, good. 120, 140. 160. 160. 180, 190. The, the power of a name. 200 and 10. 220, 220 I'm bid now. 240. The chips are on you tonight. I think you're going to have some caviar on your chips, my lovely. 250 pounds I'm at 260. Come on, people, anyone else? We're waiting for Rue's late bidder. Still there at 260. Fair warning then. Don't let it go, someone. 260. For the second time, I take my hat off Thank to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wowzers. That is a monster profit. First auction done and done. Yeah, we know who's won. Well, lead on then. <laughs> Stephen started out with £200 in his kitty. After a disappointing day at the auction and minor sell and fees, he made a loss of £89.30, leaving him with £110.70 in the piggy. But Rue made a handsome profit and doubled her £200 pot, giving her the kudos for this leg and £414.10p to spend on the next outing. I'll be sad to say goodbye to this beautiful ship. Just you mind how you go with those evening shoes. As long as I can still drive us away from here, I'm happy. 